Oftentimes patients uh, who come in will have questions about an implant that's been previously placed and there may be mobility, there may be bad taste, they may be able to see the threads of the implant itself, it may be visually just unsightly. Many times when patients come in there's usually uh, something dealing with movement uh, or pain or pressure that will first get them spurred on to make a phone call or to come in to evaluate a failing implant. When patients arrive inquiring about potential uh, failing implants or may not even know it, one of the first things that needs to be evaluated is the difference whether it's perimucositis or periimplantitis. Perimucositis is more of an equivalent of kind of like gingivitis. So you have inflammation of the gum tissue around the implant itself. We haven't lost any bone structure yet, but if it stays, it, it can and will easily persist into periimplantitis, which is loss of the supporting structure, so loss of the bone that's holding the implant in. And should that occur, then we have several things that we do in order to try to help correct that situation and rectify it, either regrow the bone itself around the dental implant or halt and stabilize it, uh, depending upon the severity of it uh, at that point in time. If it's truly peri-implantitis, uh, oftentimes, if it's in the back of the mouth especially, we're able to um, remove the crown itself by drilling through the crown, or uh, if it's a screw-retained crown, we can take it off, uh, put a cover screw back on the dental implant itself, and bone graft the implant and regrow that bone, regenerate it, and then after that patient's healed for several months, we can go back in and put that original restoration back in their mouth, saving them a couple thousand dollars of having a new crown made in that capacity. For many patients, one of the first things that will kind of set off the alarm bells in their head is the fact that there's movement with this dental implant, there's mobility. Whereas the dental implant was placed into bone, there shouldn't be any movement associated with it. So if there's mobility, oftentimes there's pain that comes along with that as well. And so as that continues, you can, ha you can have different tastes and smells and whatnot associated. But usually the first thing that really kind of triggers uh, any kind of concern for a patient is mobility of an implant. So for patients who do have uh, concerns about a failing implant, it's not necessarily the end of the road or a lost cause, and you don't have to necessarily scrap the entire situation and start over. But the longer you drag your feet, the more you can guarantee that that is going to occur. So the sooner that patient can get into the office, have it treated, have it correctly treated, um, then the better chance you're gonna have of truly getting a success out of that and salvaging your entire investment that you've had on that, on that implant.